For Reverend Archie Mitchell, the spring of 1945 was a big season of change. Outside of the context of World War II, Mitchell and his wife Elsie were expecting their first child. He just accepted a new post as pastor for the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church in a sleepy little logging town in Bly, Oregon. After settling into the town, Archie and Elsie decided to take their little Sunday school class, five kids ranged from the age of 11 to 14, on a picnic up near the ponderosa pines of Gearheart Mountain. After driving up a one-lane gravel road, the Mitchells parked their sedan, began to unload the picnic baskets and fishing poles, while children ran around, played, and explored. That was when 13-year-old Joan Patsky found a strange white canvas on the ground. It looked like some sort of balloon and called everyone else over to investigate. One of the small children reached down to touch it, and then, boom, a huge explosion rocked the mountainside. Elsie, the unborn baby, and all five children were killed almost instantly by the blast. When a forest ranger arrived on the scene, he found the dead sprawled out all around the explosion, with Archie still trying to put out the small fire on his wife's burning dress with his bare hands. So what happened here? What was the cause behind the only wartime military deaths in the contiguous United States? Well, when U.S. military investigators showed up on the scene, they knew exactly what had happened, even though they didn't want anyone else to know. You see, this strange contraption was actually a high-altitude balloon bomb that had been launched by Japan to attack North America. After American aircraft incessantly bombed Tokyo and other Japanese cities during the Doolittle Raid of 42, the Japanese military desperately wanted to retaliate in kind. Only thing is, their manned aircraft weren't able to reach the west coast of the United States. However, what the Japanese lacked in technology, they made up for geography and with sheer divine providence. Since all the way back in the 13th century, when a pair of cyclones destroyed a fleet of Mongol invaders, the Japanese had long believed that the gods were willing to dispatch divine winds, or kamikaze, in order to protect them. Well, during World War II, the military believed that the winds would save them once more, when scientists discovered a jet stream of air 30,000 feet up in the sky they would be able to fly hydrogen to film balloons to North America in just three or four days. So for the next two years, the Japanese produced thousands of balloons made out of lightweight but durable mulberry wood paper that was stitched together by little schoolgirls. They used 40-foot-long ropes attached to the balloons in order to mount the 30-pound high-explosive bombs, designing them to drop when over the United States, then to start massive forest fires to instill widespread panic and divert resources in the war effort. Between November 1944 and April 45, the Japanese military launched more than 9,000 of these balloons in an operation codenamed Fugo. Most ended up falling harmlessly into the Pacific Ocean, but over 300 of the balloons actually made the 5,000 mile journey, which spot a floating in the skies all over North America, ranging from all the way up in Alaska to all the way down in Arizona, even as far east as Grand Rapids, Michigan. In March, one balloon even hit a high-tension power line and caused a temporary blackout at a plant that was actually manufacturing plutonium that later be used in the atomic bombs to turn out five months later. However, at the end of the day, Fugo was ultimately a military failure. Very few balloons even ended up reaching their targets. The jet stream winds were only powerful enough in the wintertime, and all the snowy and damp conditions in the U.S. prevented any large fires from starting, with the only casualties they caused were the deaths at Bly, Oregon. However, Operation Fugo, or the Balloon Bomb Project, is actually more than a novelty, a little footmark in the story of the World War II. For one thing, the balloon bombs actually seem to have foretold the future military warfare. So they were essentially the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile. The way that the pilot's balloons delivered death from above could even be described as World War II's version of drone warfare. Secondly, even over 70 years later, there are still hundreds of potentially dangerous bombs lurking in the remote, rugged wilderness in the West. In fact, just a few years ago, a pair of loggers in British Columbia and the remains of a balloon bomb just waiting to go off. Who knows how many more could be out there? Remnants of decades gone by in a war that's long since been over.